if you use DC DCB, so it takes 82.5 milliseconds, so three times faster than normal TCP. And uh, the third one is DC uh, BSD feature. So, so there is a situation that you use DC TCP, but web the, your destination doesn't use uh, DC TCP. In that case. So DC TCP is used at one sided. So in that case, in the situation, so the down the dead transmission time of uh, for downloading is uh, eighty nine point four milliseconds. So what we can say from this example is. You can uh, so using DC BSD DC TCP achieve faster than um, faster data transfer time uh, than using this normal TCP. Not only in the fully deployed network, but also partially deployed network. Yeah. Difference in the figures just on the Uh, so, in in this example, there is no packet loss in the. So it's just the building. Yeah, yeah. So the the this time indicates the queuing delay in the switch. So, so I think many of you may not know what DC TCP is. So, to, so. At first, I'm going to introduce you what DC TCP is and, uh, what, and uh, what benefit you can receive and uh, how you, uh, so what is necessary network equi equipment for DC TCP. Then I'm going to introduce you what BSD TCP feature. Uh, at at last, I'm going to show you how to configure DC TCP on FreeBSD. Okay. So, what is DC TCP? DC TCP stands for Dead Center TCP. So, as the name indicates, DC TCP is a proposed TCP variant that solves performance in flow in the Dead Center network. So, what happens if we use Normal TCP in the data center network. So, so if imagine the situation, the, the so the link shares uh, shares short flow and the long flow. In in this situation, short flow loses to uh, loses long flow. Then they get longer transmission time. So this case happened so in the data center. So imagine short, short flow is like um, dead base query and the response and the long flow is like bulk, dead, bulk transfer for server migration. So DC TCP solved this problem and uh, contributes these three uh, DC TCP contributes these three points. So they first they DC TCP maintains low and predictable latency for short flows and uh, second DC TCP flows observe traffic past. Third, DC TCP flow maintains high throughput for long flows. So DC TCP focuses on data center network. Why do they focus on DC as data center network? What is the difference between data center network and actual normal 
network like in the internet. So this figure, picture shows the difference. So um, there are, so in this picture, there are two quite, so I sh introduced, I, I show two as perspective of the difference. So first difference is traffic pattern in data center network and the uh, network. So in the data center, uh, servers communicate with uh, servers inside the data center, the same network. So the major majority, um, major of traffic pattern is run inside a network. Compared to the data center network, internet communicates with other network, so like this. And uh, thus, another difference between data center network and the uh, internet is uh, prioritize criteria of applic for application. So in the data center, they prioritize data transmission time. Even if it's so one millisecond delay, they lose customers. So they want shorter transmit short transmission time. On the contrary, the inter the internet focuses on the throughput, average of throughput. So what we can say from this difference is, so first, the data center network feature is easy to, it is easy to optimize the network equip equipment and operation for the, themselves. And the second, a feature is the application requirement. So they, so tenant, so customers uh, want short delay and not that retransmission. So by using these features, what did TCP does approaches is leveraging. ECN to the internet. What is ECN? So ECN stands for Explicit Congestion Control Notification. ECN is a traditional active queuing management scheme and uh, it proposed around 1990 or more than 10 years ago, I think. So they provide supportive information for TCP congestion control. So they work, the, it's not uh, one a type of congestion control, but they, are, they work with TCP. So ECN motivated it to make host transfer data without packet losses. So, so in order to use ECN, you need uh, network equi equipment su support for ECN. So pre if you want to use e ECN, please check um, layer th three switches and the routers configuration. And uh, for, for servers, it is easy to support ECN because many of Op many operating system has been implemented ECN, so y you just set up, turn on ECN, that's all. So how ECN works? So before explaining about it, I'm gonna quickly review how traditional TCP works. So look at the top figures. So, so there are two servers, sender and the receiver. Between them, there is one seat. And uh, if sender transmits many packets, 
the queue of the switch becomes full, then packet loss occurs. The sending sub sending host uh, knows a packet loss by uh, res receiver's arc. Then sender control the sending host control window size and and uh, so under how helps window size. So if you if the server and the network e equipment use it use ECN, what happened is uh, explained uh, showing in the bottom bottom picture. So switch has a threshold that indicate potential congestion. So if sender transmit many packets, the queue of the switch ex exceeds the threshold. Then in that in at the timing switch starts to mark ECN. Then Receiver, reci receiver gets ECN, so they respond. They res mm, they send the receiver sends ECN echo by uh, arc, and the sender knows now knows um, ECN is marked on the switch, so they halt con con congestion window si uh, window size. Then they avoid packet loss, like this mechanism. So, so DCTCP uses ECN differently. So they use ECN to estimate uh, the potential congestion uh, precisely. So what they so. What they do is shown in this picture. So, switch configuration is same with ECN, EC, ECN, traditional ECN. I mean, so they, they, the switch has threshold, and uh, if the Q length of the switch become, uh, exceeds the threshold, they start. It starts to mark ECN. And uh, the difference between legacy ECN and uh, DCTCP is uh, window control. So they for um, DCTCP senders um, calculate the fraction of ma ECN marked packet. In the win in the previous window size. So in this example, suppose that um, window size is so window size updated will be updated uh, at this timing. So in this case, so they receive two ECN marked packet and uh, six no e marked packet, no ECN marked packet. So. The fraction of ECN mark packet is one fourth. So the DCTCP sender reflects this information to window control like this. So, so this is why DCTCP can um, uh, how to say. This is why DCTCP achieved the faster transmission time than TCP and uh, without packet losses. So we do the simple experiment to verify the DCTCP performance. So this is a topology we use. So there are four first and uh, four machines and uh, they uh, they run 
uh, FreeBSD 10, current 10. And they have two dual core CPU, and uh, they have 16 gigabytes memory. And they have four Ethernet, one, G, one giga Ethernet card. And uh, for switches, we use uh, Cisco Nexus 3548. This is the switch uh, implemented for DCTCP. So they um, support ECN. In this switch, we set threshold to 10 packet. And uh, in order to run, uh, run DCTCP or TCP flow, we use flow ground as a traffic monitoring, a uh, traffic generator. So this is a topology we used. So there are three senders and uh, one receiver. So this sender uh, transmit packet to receiver using uh, and the destination is R1. And the uh, receiver has two interfaces. So we set two IP address for receiver. So for sender one, we use R1 IP address. Uh, and uh, for sender two and uh, three, for sender three, we use diff different um, IP address. So in, in the evaluation, we did two, two experiments in cast and the dead bulk transfer. In the in cast experiment, we evaluate the TCP or DC TCP performance for a bust transfer. In order to do this, achieve this, we run 10 flow at the same time. And we change the uh, dead size to be transfer from 10 to 800 kilobytes. We measure the average of dead transmission time for these ten, or for the 10 floors. Another scenario is bulk dead, bulk transfer. So in this case, in this experiment, we evaluate the TCP or DC TCP performance by running mix of short and long flow. So in order to do this, we, what we do is uh, start 10 short flow, five, 500 milliseconds after two long flow runs. So as like in case scenario, we change the data size for short flow. And uh, we set the static value for long flow. For it, it corresponds to 40 megabytes. Then we measure the average of data transmission time for short and uh, short flow and the long flow. So this is a result. So for when we did in cast scenario. So, so x-axis shows the dead size to transfer, uh, the sender sending host transfer, and uh, the y-axis shows the average of dead transmission time. Each, each plot shows uh, average transmission time, and uh, the error bar shows the standard deviation. So what happened here is, so DCTCP is all sa almost same with normal TCP. But uh, if the, the, the dead size is increases, it becomes uh, 
there is a slight, there is five millisecond difference between them. So DCTCP is faster than TCP slightly. So what happens if we mix the long flow and the short flow? So you can see the uh, very uh, so good advantage of DCTCP. So the top figure shows the average transmission time of sh short flows, and uh, the bottom figure shows the uh, average trans dead transmission time of long flow. So as you as you can see the difference be of uh, between DC TCP and the SAC TCP uh, normal TCP is not so big for long flows. On the contrary um, for short flows they there is significant difference. Even if, so if we see the result when the sending host transfer 10 kilobyte data, so TCP takes 33.7 millisecond. On the other hand, DCTCP takes 1.6 millisecond. This difference becomes larger when the data size becomes uh, increases. So if the sending host uh, transfers 800 kilobyte data, so DCTCP uh, is three times faster than normal TCP. So. So we're gonna quickly review what DCTCP is. So what is DCTCP? DCTCP is a TCP bar proposed TCT TCP variant using ECN for data center network. So and uh, what benefits we can receive is shown in the our <laughs> like as shown in the Oh, in our experiment, you can reduce 170 millisecond of data transmission time for 800 kilobyte transfer in the mix of mixed traffic of long flow and short flow. And uh, in order to use e DC TCP, you need uh, switch and uh, layer three switch and the router and the servers, servers they that support ECN. So next, I'm going to introduce you what DC, BSD DC TCP feature are. So I extend DC or original DC TCP for, uh, for to, to get better performance. And so what I did is first is incremental deployment support. The another extension is initial window calcu size calculation for performance tuning. So why I did uh, incremental deployment support? Why <coughs> it's, is it <coughs> important in data center? So Look at this picture, and uh, so can you recognize the difference between two pictures? So in the top figure, both servers are DCTCP. Both server uses DCTCP. In, in the on the bottom figure, one server uses DCTCP, and the other server uses. Is ECN with TCP. So we can recognize the difference between two, but for servers, there is not. So because, uh, because the, 
for servers, they use both. Uh, so they use both of them uses ECN, and they somehow somehow behaved congestion co and like TCP. So they don't recognize the difference. So why do we need to consider uh, this situation? In so in data center, this situation happens. So this is an example. So if you run application server in the data center network, you can easily up upgrade your kernel because you know application doesn't matter kernel version. So you can use new protocol like DCTCP. On the other hand, if you um, if you run appliance services, uh, they limited uh, kernel version to for the for the driver support or something like that. So in that case, they you they cannot use DCTCP for a while. So in this situation. One-sided, so the server, one server can use DCTCP, but the other cannot use DCTCP. So, in in this topology, what we what I found is, so in the worst case, DCTCP get uh, one-sided DCTCP get what. Well, to a very long, much longer transmission time uh, than two-sided DCTCP. So we solved this problem and uh, by supporting compatibility with ECN. So it's very detailed in this uh, in this talk. So. <laughs> Please see our paper for detail. So, what by supporting the compatibility with ECN, so BSD DC TCP Remax, 90% of similar performance with DC two sided DC TCP. So, we minimize the performance penalty compared to the original DC TCP. So another feature of DC BSD DC TCP <coughs> is uh, initial window size calculation. So, so for initial window size calculation, there is trade-off between latency and uh, throughput. So in the free BSD DC TCP, the this you can choose either of them by setting parameter. So if you set throw stats as the parameter throw start to zero, you can get higher throughput. But it's unfriendly to competitive running flows. If you set throw start to one, so which is recommended to DC TCP draft, and you can what the benefit you can receive is a short shorter latency and a friendliness to competitive flaws. Okay, so how can I how can you use this? How can I set DC TCP on FreeBSD? So this is the flow to set up DCTCP. First, you you load DCTCP module. Then, if needed, check the available congestion control algorithm using this command. Then you 
you in order to use uh, in order to receive the benefit of DCTCP, you need to you have to enable ECN. Then set ECN to congestion control algorithm like this. So this BSD DCTCP included uh, the benefit of uh, the support of incremental DCTCP benefits, so it's no, not necessary for option, so additional configuration for it. If you want to turn the, how do you say, the trade or turn the, uh, you want to change the initial con window size control, set up this command. I so like this. So in my talk, I gonna I had I introduced the what DCTCP is and uh, what this BSD DCTCP feature is. So what we did is. So DC t BSD DC TCP minimize the performance penalty in the in the partial use of DC TCP. So we can say that the BSD DC TCP is more beneficial, so more practical than other implementation. And uh, the Next, the other message is, so we have selectable parameter for performance tuning. So you can choose the performance benefit uh, according to your, how do you say, request for applications. So at the last, I, I want to say, Thank you to these guys. So thanks to Hiren and the Lawrence and the grant support, uh, I can merge DCTCP in FreeBSD. And uh, thanks, I, I want to say thank you to my university and the NetApp La Germany because, uh, because you know, I, I can work on DCTCP thanks to their cooperation. And uh, I want to say thank you to Cisco guys so because they help uh, DCTCP con about DCTCP con con configuration on, the, on their seat. And uh, thank you for all ITF people and uh, others as well. So oh, that's all. So <laughs> So if you have any question or yeah. Could you just put the URLs back up that you had on the screen earlier? Right at the start. The we URLs of the presentation that you had. I'm I'm sorry. So can you go back to the beginning where the URLs Okay. Ah oh, okay. Yeah. This one. Those ones, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, just to confirm, you're not manipulating any of the Q fairness, right? The the gains are simply because there's not loss mm -hmm. on the sensitive short loop connections. What? Um, the gains are just because there's simply not loss on the short loop connections. Is that? But. What do you not packet loss on the short lived connections? Is that really one of the entire games? Right? Yeah. Meaning you're not manipulating anything, any of the cues or mm. any of the fairness. Yes. Yeah. Um, the performance data you showed, that was with small star off. Small star equals zero? Uh, in this in this experiment, I set um, initial window size to three, I think, yeah. In 
no slow start? At the, yeah, we have slow start. So bigger initial windows. Hmm? It's parameter here. Is it one or zero? Ah, zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Uh, do you have any measurements for that set of one? Yes. Uh, do but they come out the same? Um, in this case, yes, we are, we. Uh, it's same. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that case. I'm worried about. This way, this one, yeah. I think slightly, slightly takes longer time, but it's not so long, I think. You can check uh, my master thesis if you want. Maybe <laughs> there is a link uh, on the, on this, on this draft. <laughs> yep. So I'm wondering, what if you have uh, in your data center servers that are kind of bad citizens, whether they, they don't and they don't listen to mm -hmm. ECN and they're just sending standard TCP? How does DCTCP, which is very gentle because it does listen to ECN, will compete against uh, these other flows if you make measurements? So you mean? So you, I'm saying like imagine those two large flows mm -hmm. of the test. They're just standard TCP, really mm -hmm. aggressive. They will fill the queues and they won't yeah. listen to ECM. Yeah. Ah, so in that case, DC TCP loses. <laughs> so you have to separate, separate uh, two flows and with uh, different configuration in the switch. Okay. This is a theory, yeah. Well, the assumption was that you control the data center, so you can make sure all your hosts do it here. So if you're using a mixed tenancy sort of environment where you don't control the OS, well then you either need to do flow isolation uh, in your networking gear or something else. If your uh, infrastructure provider assumes that the ECN is supported and it doesn't support, it doesn't support uh, ECN, you cannot uh, you mean in the switch? Operations. This is more yeah. for the infrastructure yeah. provider to run than for someone on the machine at a data center. It's more yeah. to control the whole path. Yes, but if, what if, I mean, this point is kind of valid, right? What if you don't? I mean, who's guaranteeing you that all the servers, that all the VMs you're going to run in your data center are all going to stop negotiating that? Right. That's yeah. The that's all time with your server. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, but I mean, I was just wondering, maybe there is a technique that you would have found yeah. to switch, whether they, buy, they, mm. they will sniff on the yeah. ECN negotiation, they yeah. see, okay, this is a flow that doesn't yeah. have ECN negotiation, yeah. so I'm going to automatically put it in a different category, and on those, I will put even switches that not only support ECN, often don't do the marking quite correctly, so you've also got to be very careful when you get hardware that um, does the right thing as well, so it's like, this bit. And different variables, obviously, that we're discussing, and all of them can go wrong. So uh, it's very complex in a multi tenancy situation to try to get it working. And so, I mean, Microsoft did this for their base, and obviously, they controlled everything, so it was easy for them. Yeah, that's true. In a virtualized environment, we have to configure all the host servers that they see. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it so you mean? In a virtualized environment like VMware, on the host servers, we have to configure also, I suppose, that the ECN because uh, somehow the uh, devices and server communicates mm -hmm. and uh, we can have uh, some behavior. So you can, mean can you test, uh, the uh, on the butcher machine? In a virtualized uh, environment. So you mean the do I test uh, so I do I test uh, DC TCP on the virtual machine? Do you? You have you have a, a VM guest and a VM host yeah. and uh, a switch. Mm. The switch sends mm. ECN to your host. Mm. So 
did you did you try no. I guess, to see if the host would pass it through to the guest? Whatever no. stack terminates the three connection needs to have the support for this. Right. So, so not not, not the not the host. The, the host doesn't care. Unless you do tunneling and then you have I other issues, right? Where yeah. ECN tunneling is a whole other set of set of issues. Yeah. But it, I don't think we tested it in the VM, but it I will don't. obviously work in the VM. Yeah. <laughs> the host should just pass it through to the VM. Yes. Yeah. But it's a it's a flag it's just on a piece of traffic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, it's not touching. We can, we can have congestion on the host server. Mm. Even the ACN works very well in the West virtualized server and switch. So if you have a queue that doesn't support ECN in your path, then you have a problem. Yeah. And if the queue is in the host, you have a problem. That's just as if the switch didn't support ECN. Okay, did you test that? that uh, no. no. Oh, okay. We have to test. Uh, we assume the all switches uses ECN support. She only did one master thesis. And she <laughs> only did one more work. <laughs> <laughs> more work than any master student I've had in a long time, so. <laughs> This? Yeah. Do you have any feeling for why, with the short flows, you're getting uh, a net improvement with BCTCP and why they're converging in the bottom graph? It, it looks like it's approaching the performance of regular TCP. Um, I think the reason, the main reason is Q occupancy in the suite. But it's. But the, the TCP you're competing against is also. What? The, the, the regular TCP flow is, is also talking ECN? It's not no, like no. It's no ECN at all. No ECN. But they start 500 seconds before to before short flow runs, as I said. So I run long flow at first. Then after, say, five, 500 milliseconds, they we start short flow. So 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 for long flow so they have already occupied the band the queue for you know, for long flow. So well, the loss would be quite a bit more detrimental than short flow, right? Because the session's actually probably idle waiting for that retransmission with a large one. Well, in that case we don't have packet loss. No, I'm saying in the case where it did take a long time, it's because oh. the loss was very detrimental to the short of the session. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> for, <laughs> for without the SMA mm -hmm. um, the, the performance loss comes because the short flow is sending into a full queue already, and so it's basically yeah. guaranteed to see a loss in the beginning. Yeah. But I think that's what you mean, right? Oh. Yeah. yeah. And where the, the long session loss it can easily recover from it, you know, drop in the bucket. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. So, that's all? Yeah. Well, thank you.